All right, here we go with the third installment of Atomic Structure, and I am leaving you off, or I left you off last time, with the real cliffhanger of, um, at least in the uh, question I did the form, how many protons, neutrons, electrons did a potassium atom have? Okay, so if you look in the empiric table, you'll find this information here, and let's pull from it from what we remember next last time. So here is um, our atomic number. So that's going to tell us that we have 19 protons. And of course, if you remember, that of course is the most important of all the subatomic particles because that is what identifies the element. Now, the electrons that we talked about last time, all right, have to be equal to the protons if it's an atom. And all of the elements listed in the periodic table are listed as atoms. Atoms are electrically zero. So these things have to equal each other. Protons have the fundamental charge of plus one, and electrons have the fundamental charge of negative one. And if we remember, when we went back to table O, okay, it helps us remember exactly what that means. Now, of course, the beta particle, I said right in the word electron, it's got a negative one charge. The bottom number is charge number on this chart. And this helps us remember our particles. Proton is plus one, okay? And a neutron is also, I'm um, sorry, it, neutron has no charge. The top number is mass number, just like we've been reading. A proton has one proton, I mean, it has one mass. And a neutron has another mass. Electrons don't have any mass, okay? And it helps us remember that electrons are not part of the atomic mass. So, uh, protons, electrons, are fundamentally have opposite charges, as Table O just showed you. And how do we get neutrons? Well, we're going to round this number to 39. We're going to talk about, hopefully, why that is uh, today. And so we round that to 39.0, and we have 19. And, of course, as we talked about last time, this number is the proton and neutron number. Okay? And we just saw that from Table O. In table O, the mass number of a proton has a 1, and the mass number of a neutron has a 1. They have the same mass. And as we learned from last lecture, all the mass of the atom is that very dense nucleus. And all that empty space that exists for the atom is where these electrons, which are 2,000 times lighter, that's why they're given a 0 in table um, uh, O. Okay. So in any case, they're not part of the entire mass. So it's just protons and neutrons for the mass number here. All right, in any case, very simple. This is um, protons and neutrons for the mass number, and of course, the atomic number is the uh, proton number. So obviously, the protons cancel and you get neutrons. So 39 minus 19 gives you 20 neutrons. Nothing earth shattering there. That's a skill that's very important and very easy to do, okay? Once you have your basics down, and of course, table O is your friend if you forget those things but you won't. All right, well, some other pieces of information that is given to you in the periodic table. This bottom number is electron configuration. We're not going to get to that until next week, but there's something here right here that's important, and that's called an oxidation state. Okay, an oxidation state is, a, is, this, is basically the charge the atom likes to become. So an oxidation state represents the charge of the atom once it gains or loses a particle, okay? So it's telling me what potassium loves to become, all right? So we have a potassium atom, and then it becomes potassium plus one. What's going to change? Well, if you notice, if it's potassium plus one, it's still potassium. The proton number has to stay the same. What makes potassium element K Potassium is 19 protons. That's it. No other atom has 19 protons. So that number stays the same. But, okay, if that is true, that means inside the nucleus of potassium, it's positive 19. And we call this charge inside the nucleus a nuclear charge. And you'll hear that word. So a nuclear charge is the charge inside the nucleus. Now you may say, Mr. Grodsky, it's a little weird here. You said the atom is zero. It's electrically zero when you consider that protons and electrons in an atom. They'll always be equal. 
But if I just ask about the nucleus inside the atom, well, it's always positive. We know that from the Rutherford experiment, protons and neutrons exist in the nucleus. So only protons have a charge. So the nuclear charge is just the protons. Now, so they both are positive 19 in the nucleus. All right. How many neutrons they have or don't have won't change a thing because they're, they're, they're electrically neutral. Neutrons don't have a charge. So the question remains, how many electrons do we have? Yes, it's about the electrons. If potassium becomes plus one, it's not because it gained a proton. If it did, its chemical symbol will change. That stays constant. It became plus one because it lost an electron. So it has one less electron than normal. Well, potassium has 19 protons, plus one has 19 protons. Potassium atom has 19 electrons. They have to be equal to be electrically neutral. But K plus lost an electron. It started with 19, and now it has 18. So you have to understand that, be able to actually figure out how many electrons an ion has. And we call positive ions cations. Hear that word? Okay. So that's a cation, but it's still potassium. Now, if you want to do the charges, 19 protons gives you a plus 19 nuclear charge, and 18 electrons combined gives you a negative 18. Do the math, and it's plus 1. Okay, so that's how that works. Well, if you notice, we have chlorine sitting over here, and I'm showing you something else. Chlorine has a bunch of oxidation states, and you'll see a lot of elements who have the ability to gain or lose. But we're going to deal with the top one. The top one is the oxidation state that it likes to become most. So chlorine, real quickly, when it's an atom, has how many uh, protons? Uh, 17 protons. When it's an atom, it has, of course, 17 electrons. When it becomes Cl negative, it still has 17 protons because it still has the symbol of chlorine. But it now, because it's negative one, it must have gained an electron. So electron, okay, came to the atom, and this has one more electron than the proton. So we say this has 18 electrons. And if you do the math, negative 18 and a positive 17 and negative one. So, and they call these negative ions anions. You'll hear that word. So atoms can lose electrons and become positive, and they can gain electrons and become negative. And atoms are neutral. They're not happy. They're not sad. How are you? I'm fine. I'm normal. I'm, I'm neutral. Are you sad? No. You happy? No. I'm neutral. Well, I lose my negativity. I become positive. Okay. Or chlorine. You happy? No. Sad? No. I'm neutral. I gain some negativity, I become more negative, okay? So you get the idea. All right, we're going to move on to the ditto that I gave you in class today and continue on with this discussion. And before I do, I can't help but notice that K plus, okay, and a CL negative, if they were in close proximity, K loses an electron, chlorine gains an electron, Potassium becomes a potassium ion, chlorine becomes a chlorine ion, and my friends in chemistry, you just witnessed a chemical bond called an ionic bond. So this is how a salt will actually bond. Potassium chloride is a type of salt. It's not table salt, but a type of salt. And KCl is written this way. Why does the K stick to the Cl? Because this K is positive and the Cl is negative. How'd that happen? Well, the potassium gave its electron to the chlorine. And that's how it happened. So a lot of bonding that we're going to see later on, later on, we're going to see a flow of electrons due to someone losing and someone gaining, and they're sticking together because of the electrostatic attractions. All right, so now I'm with the uh, worksheet that I gave you today in class, and um, we're going to just review a couple of different things and add some more vocabulary. Notice I gave you table O for your viewing displeasures. Notice I also... Uh, wrote in electron here for beta particle. Okay, and I can't say enough. Electrons are considered to have no mass because they're 2,000 times lighter.
than a neutron, who has a mass of one atomic mass unit, and a proton, who has the same mass. Both of these, of course, are in the uh, nucleus, and we have a fancy name for them called nucleons. So if you're from the planet uh, Krypton or <laughs> Nucleon, you, or um, what's uh, any case, I can't remember the show, it's the, uh, what was that called? The um, Klingons from Star Trek, you're from the planet Klingon. In any case, nucleons are from the nucleus, so nucleons are protons and neutrons. Again, you see some ones we're not going to deal with, positron, gamma radiation, and, and of course alpha particle we've already talked about is two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so real quickly, let's go through these. Okay, determine the number of protons for boron. Hey, don't be a boron, get this right. That of course is going to be five because it I didn't say the word ion, so we have to assume atom, atomos, atoms and neutrals, so it has to be five electrons. Neutrons, I'm going to round this number to 11. 11 minus 5, we get 6. Okay, nuclear charge. Okay, this is when people say, ah, the charge is zero. Uh, no, charge of the nucleus. The atom is zero, but what's the charge of the nucleus? Well, the nucleus has protons and neutrons. Case in point, if you draw the atom, we're going to have five protons. And I'll make the protons blue. And we'll do some red neutrons. And we have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they probably would be more mixed than this. The neutrons somehow um, offset the repulsive, for the repulsive forces of the... Um, <coughs> of the um, the protons have for each other. So they kind of help with that. So they're probably a little intermixed. And of course we have electrons, okay? And electrons are gonna be of course uh, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's our Rutherford model. So the nuclear charge is the charge of the nucleus. Who's in it? Well, the protons and neutrons. Neutrons have no charge. Of course it's plus five. All right, do the fluorine if you'd like. You can stop the video. I'm going to do it right now, so I'll give you a couple seconds to stop if you want to try it first and see how you do. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to go. I'm going to start now. I'm going to start now. I'm going to start. Okay. 